What's up everyone and welcome back to the comms channel. I received a question on my second channel announcement video from KG4GAV asking about what frequencies storm chasers use. There's a threat for severe weather the latter part of this week that I've been chasing and had a busy day yesterday with this area of rotation that started in Hollis, Oklahoma that eventually turned into a bit of a disorganized tornado a bit further down the road before becoming a large classic example of a stovepipe tornado near Duke, Oklahoma. I loaded up some frequencies on my radios for this trip, so I figured this would be a good time to join me and see what I do to prepare and provide some examples of what you might hear. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. First, let me apologize about the audio. I'm not at home, obviously, so I don't have my usual microphone set up. So hopefully the audio isn't too bad. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the radios I'm using. Our other YouTube channel is for storm chasing to capture the sights and sounds of storm chasing, including the radio communications. And be sure to subscribe there if you're interested in seeing more from the examples at the beginning of this video. And I'll leave a link to that channel in the video description below. For capturing the radio communications on that channel, I'm using two radios. For communications on ham radio frequencies, I'm using my ICOM ID52. And for everything else, I'm using my ICOM R30. Then for transmitting, I'm currently using my Yaesu FTM400. A nice feature of all these radios is they all have dual watch capabilities, which is a feature that allows you to monitor two frequencies at once, which essentially gives me six radios, even though I just have three. Now, as far as frequencies are concerned, there are a number of frequencies that storm chasers use. Most of these are simplex, however, so hopefully you don't hear anything on these while listening, because if you do hear chasers, you're very likely near severe storms, and you'll want to keep a close eye on the weather. The primary general ham radio frequency I hear being used is 146.550. There's an alternate of 146.460 that I program in, but I don't know if I've ever heard anything on it. I have to keep a closer eye on this on my upcoming chases and see. The following are the remaining simplex frequencies. I've never heard anything on these, but I program them anyways, just in case. So here's some example audio from these ham radio simplex frequencies during yesterday's storm chase discussing a road closure. Of course it's blocked. Yeah, there's a road behind us. I'm looking at a bunch of chases on board. So there's got to be a road back there somewhere. That's 6-1. Do we know why it's blocked? There were a couple of dirt roads that headed east. They saw some bridge. I'm back here now. So just as we were... Bridge is out. Copy that. We stopped that. There are some folks drove around it, but I'm not going to. So those are the ham radio frequencies I know of, but not everyone that chases has a ham radio license though, so I'll also add additional frequencies to scan through frequencies like FRS, GMRS have been popular, and also MURS and CB radio, but I can't recall ever hearing any activity on those as it seems most people favor the FRS, GMRS radios since you can easily find them at most stores like Walmart. And here's some example audio of these from yesterday's storm chase. So note that black mass at 1 o'clock up in the rain there. Interesting black mass there. Yeah, that might be a funnel. Is looking for a pull off. Block a tornado. Holy sh! Exactly. Woo! So those are all of the simplex frequencies, which are direct radio to radio communications for those of you who aren't aware what that means. There's also some repeater systems that are used for the National Weather Service's Skywarn program. This will consist of a directed net with a net control station that will take reports of severe weather from ham radio operators to forward along to the National Weather Service. The net control station will sometimes have access to things like NWS chat where they discuss their plans for warnings and you'll often hear the warnings here shortly before they get officially sent out. Now you won't necessarily hear storm chasers on here, although some will send in reports via ham radio like myself. 
and since these are repeater frequencies, they're going to have more range than the simplex frequencies I just covered and are probably your best bet to listen in if you live in an area where there's a threat for severe weather. And here's some examples from a Skywarn net from yesterday's storm chase. Welcome to the SWIRA link system. K B 5 L L I repeater. Tornado warning coming out on the air stair start. K Mother PS. The weather service in Norman has issued a tornado warning for central Jackson County, the southwest Oklahoma, and southeastern Harmon County and southwest Oklahoma to 8 o'clock. At 7 11, a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado was located six miles north of El Dorado. K Mother PS. Now there are some of these ham radio repeater systems that are linked together to provide an even greater range and many of these are used for Skywarn. Back home in Tennessee for example we have an awesome linked repeater system called M-Tiers that has Skywarn nets whenever there's severe weather threatening the area. Since the system is linked I'm able to listen in to reports hundreds of miles away from all over the state through this system. There's also other states with linked repeater systems as well and the ones I program in Will depend on where I'm chasing. As far as determining the general area I'm going to chase, I'll look at it a few things. Starting off with the tornado outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. For yesterday's storm chase, for example, I planned on being somewhere within the 5% area here. Since I was driving from Arkansas, I planned on the southern portion of the 5%. And to further narrow things down, I look at these new machine learning forecasts from Colorado State University. And here we can see it actually favors the southern portion near the Oklahoma and Texas border. So based on that, I just go to websites like Repeater Book and search for Skywarn repeaters to program in and would look for ones that cover the general area I'm planning on chasing in. And also Radio Reference is another good website to find information on these repeaters as well. In addition to that, I'll also do some web searches for linked repeater systems, and you'll often find web pages dedicated to the systems like the M tiers system back home in Tennessee. And finally, I'll sometimes just scan through frequencies and see what I might pick up. While I was watching the rotation in Hollis, Oklahoma, I picked up their local police department talking about the storm. Yeah, okay, we've got quite a bit of rotation right here north of Hollis, getting pretty heavy. Once this gets a little bit further to the east, I'm going to shoot around down Highway 62 back over toward Rear County, but right now it's just kind of hovering. That'll do it for this video going over the severe weather related frequencies and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and then subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you're interested in seeing more storm chasing related content, I have much more to come on our other channel. So be sure to subscribe there and I'll provide you a link to that in the video description below. Thank you all and have a good one.